What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 519. Today, we're going to talk about creating habits. It's a martial arts topic. It's a life topic. And it's time we talk about it. Who am I? I'm Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host here. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. And I'm just a guy who really loves traditional martial arts. So I made it my job. Everything we do here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. And if you want to know what that means, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find so much stuff over there. All the projects, the products, the things that we do to support those of you training. One of the things over there at whistlekick.com is our store. It's the place you, you buy stuff. Shirts and apparel. Shirts are apparel, aren't they? Hats. Our training programs. Strength, speed. There's more of them coming all the time. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you can save 15% off anything over there. You support the show. You let us know that the show leads to sales, and it justifies the money that we put into this show every month. If you like the show, I hope you will check out WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Did you know you can go there and look up shows by guest location or subject, style? Did you know we put together a collection of episodes for training at home to offer you some advice? It's a bunch of stuff over there. We put a lot of time into that website. So, go. Visit, learn, interact, leave comments under the posts. One of the things that I look back on that hasn't really happened that I wish did is people going to the website and leaving comments under episodes. I I would love to see more conversation there. Maybe you can help make that happen. Why do we do what we do? Well, we do it because we're trying to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists. We're giving you resources and support and product and inspiration through all the things that we do here. And if you want to help the show, if you want to help Whistlekick and all the work that we're doing, make a purchase. We already talked about that. You could share an episode. You could follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. You could tell a friend. You could pick up a book on Amazon. You could leave a review on Amazon or Facebook or Google. Or you could support the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Whistlekick. It's the place to go. You can support us monthly with as little as $2. $5 a month, you get access to more. And the more you drop in, the more we're going to give you. I feel very strongly about delivering value where people contribute. And so it's not just a donation. We're going to give you a lot of stuff back. But you can check it out before you even make a commitment. So go to that website, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Let's talk about habits, creating habits. When we talk about creating a habit, we're usually talking about making a positive change in our lives. I don't know anybody who's ever sought out to make a negative change in their life, but even if you wanted to, the process is the same. How do we create a habit? Well, let's talk about this show and how we created the habit for this show. Here we are, well over 500 episodes, well over five years of this podcast, and it takes time. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday and they said, how much time do you put in for this show? Well, it's about five hours a week for me recording and getting things ready and and dealing just with the components of this show. There's a lot more to my life, to my day, and whistle kick than this show. But if we just look at the show, that five hours or so, how did I get there? I didn't just suddenly wake up and say, okay, it's time to do five hours. If you go way back, you'll see that there was one episode a week for months. I think it was episode 39 where we started adding a second show per week, 37, somewhere in there. So that means there were months, it was over six months of one episode a week. And I would prepare and I would schedule the guest because back then it was just me. I didn't have anybody else helping. And I had a process. I built a process. I made sure that there was time carved out in my calendar. And now here we are years later and the habit it's not a big deal. Does it take time? Yeah, it takes time, but it takes less time. And it's an easier thing for me to wrap my mind around because I've been doing it frequently. And that's the key to building a habit. It's frequency and consistency. When do our episodes come out? Same two days every week, Monday and Thursday. We've got the same frequency and we're consistent with the time of day and the day of the week that these episodes come out. I'm going to guess that many of you listen to episodes at roughly the same time. Maybe 
the episode downloads while you're at work on Monday and you listen to it Monday as you drive home. Maybe the same thing on Thursday. Or maybe you listen on your way to work. Or maybe at work. From the feedback I've received over the years, many of you have a consistent pattern with when you listen to this show. And that's the same thing with the podcast I listen to. There's a consistency. There's a habit that goes on there. What about your training? You probably go to the same martial arts classes every week. You know, if you're a Monday, Wednesday, Friday person, you almost always go to Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. I've taught fitness classes, still do. I've taught a lot of things and people tend to come to the same classes, same times because they build that frequency, that consistency into their life. And this is the secret. It's not really a secret, but it seems to be a secret for a lot of people. So let's talk about how do you bring that? How do you create that change using frequency and consistency with something else? What's the number one change people want to make in their life? They want to get healthier. There are a lot of different specifics under that. You know, maybe you want to lose weight. You want to gain strength. You want to whatever. If I was to ask 10 people on the street how you accomplish those goals, I I would guess all 10 would have the knowledge, maybe not super specifics, but they would be able to tell me what to do. If you're trying to get healthier, well, you, you got you to gotta eat right and you got to exercise and maybe some people would say drink more water. So if we all know it, why don't we do it? And this isn't just for these goals. This is for anything you're trying to do. It's because creating the habit is hard. And over the years, I've witnessed a lot of people make one huge mistake with trying to create a habit. And you know what that is? If we had a drum roll, it would go here. They try to do too much at one time. Think about that for a second. Maybe you're this person, or if not, you know this person, someone who comes to you and says, I'm going to make this revolutionary change in my life. I'm going to start training and I'm going to go to classes six days a week. And insert martial art here is going to be my life. And they make it three to six months. And they burn out and they don't do it. And the same thing happens with every big lofty goal. Why? Because it's too much at one time. Psychologically, it takes energy for us to make change. There's a, there's a, a tank. There's a change tank that we have access to. And it's not nearly as big as we think it is. And if we try to change everything in our lives all at once, it's exhausting. Because our body is used to, our mind is used to living in a certain way. So how do you change this? How do you get past that? You pick one small thing and you do that. I've read conflicting science saying change takes three weeks. It takes two weeks. It takes far longer. There's no set time. I think a month is the right time. Let's say you're looking to make a change in health. If we look at what people do, what they don't do, And we look for what's the easiest thing that we can do to start building on some momentum. Here's one. Start your day with a big glass of water. Before your coffee, before you eat, have a big glass of water. Is that on its own going to change your life? Yes. Is it going to revolutionize your life? No. Will you notice a difference? Not at first. You're not going to wake up on day three and say, man, I'm so glad I'm drinking that glass of water every morning. It's changed my life. But what happens a month later? You don't even have to think about it. It happens. And you've probably noticed some very small changes. Maybe your skin looks better. Maybe you notice, hey, I guess I was a little dehydrated. Maybe you don't eat quite as much at breakfast. There are a lot of things that you might notice. And here's the key. After that month, it suddenly becomes easier. And now you're inspired. It doesn't take as much energy out of the change tank. Might not be the best name for that, but we're going to run with it. And you make another change. Maybe this one's a little bit bigger. 
And that change can be bigger because you're inspired. Because you've seen the results of making the small change. Let's apply this to martial arts. Let's, let's apply it to training. Do any of you out there know the first training program we released? Do you know what it is? Oh, wait. Three, two, one. Two-Minute Martial Arts. We've been working on that for years, and shout out to Justin, who administers that. Uh, as an aside, there's a book coming with Two-Minute Martial Arts. Oh, I'm not going to say any more about that. Why Two-Minute Martial Arts? Because everyone has two minutes, and we release a new training every day. So it fits into your schedule, and it builds the habit. Why is that two minutes important? Because it adds up. Two minutes is roughly 15 minutes a week. It's roughly an hour a month. It's roughly another 12 hours every year. There are a good number of martial artists who train roughly 12 hours a month. It's like adding another month onto the year with your training. Now, what happens if that two minutes is going solidly and you say, you know, I like doing this. I'm going to use two-minute martial arts to create this habit. And then I'm going to stick around and train for a couple more minutes on my own. That two minutes could become three to five. A while back, we did an episode on why people have a hard time with things that don't end. And this is why. This is the heart of it. It's because people struggle to make massive change last. Crash diets. Why are they so short? Because people can't sustain massive changes to the way they eat. Whatever you're looking to change in your life, look for the smallest possible thing you can do and do it every day. Let's say you want to walk more. You think walking is important. You've got a, a step counter on your wrist and it tells you you don't walk nearly enough and you want to walk more. There are a couple different ways you could handle that. You could say, you know what? From now on, after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm going to go for a walk for an hour. Well, what's the chance that you've got 20 hours a week to spare? That's, that's a lot. That's exhausting. And you're probably going to burn out in two to three weeks. What's an easier thing to do? What if when you go to the grocery store, you park as far away from the store as you can? You're probably not carrying the groceries. You're probably pushing them in a cart anyway. So you get a few steps. And what if when you're at the store, you go up and down every aisle? What if you do that for a month or two? Is it going to revolutionize your life? No. But you'll probably start feeling good about the numbers on your watch. And you'll probably say, hey, you know, I'm digging this. This works for me. And what might the next change be? Maybe after. Lunch, maybe you work in an office after lunch, you go out and you go for a walk around the parking lot. Maybe it takes you five minutes. Maybe you do that for a few weeks and you feel good about it. Change has to make you feel good. Back at the top of the episode, I mentioned people don't create change for negative things. They create change for positive things. We need to correlate the actions we're taking with positive results. And that positive result could just be you feel good. Start small and build on it. Is this stuff rocket science? Nope. Where do people fail? They fail because they're trying to do too much at once. Whatever you're trying to do, start small. When I talk about training forms, you know, when, I, when I'm working with people who are trying to learn their form, what do I tell them to do? I don't tell them to do it an hour every day. I tell them to do it once a day. Build the habit. You'll cultivate memory from that. This is the strategy that I've used to make a lot of changes in my life. There are a lot of things that go on in my personal life that I don't talk about on this show, but many of them have stemmed from my recognition that something had to change and a desire to make small changes. If you want to be the best martial artist you can be, you train every day. Does that mean you go to a class every day and you burn four hours on the clock? No. It means you train a little bit every day. How much is a little? That's up to you. 
It should start as small as it can be. Maybe it's two minute martial arts. Maybe you don't even have two minutes or you don't want to do two minutes. Maybe you have a stopwatch in 60 seconds and you shadow box for 60 seconds. Maybe you do one form once a day. Anything helps move that needle forward. Don't second guess yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't say, I need to do more. I could do more and turn it into a negative thing. Focus on the positive. You're doing more than you did yesterday. You're doing more than you could. You could do a lot less and be thankful for that. What changes have you incorporated into your life? I would encourage you to, if not pause after this episode is done, take a few minutes, think about what you've done that makes you satisfied and proud over the last however many days, weeks, months, years of your life. How did you get there? You probably did it in a similar way to what I'm talking about here. So once you see that strategy, start applying it. Pick one thing. Make tomorrow better than today. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, sign up for the newsletter, leave some comments, check out some episodes, and then go over to whistlekick.com. Maybe make a purchase and support what we're doing here. Podcast 15 gets you 15% off. And if you want to do even more, you can support the show and what we do in so many ways. Patreon, reviews, books, programs, sharing episodes, shouting us out somewhere on social media. We're at Whistlekick. And if you see somebody out there, you know, rocking a Whistlekick hat or a shirt or maybe wearing a Whistlekick belt, say hello. Introduce yourself. Help us grow this wonderful community of traditional martial artists. I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate your faith in me and your willingness to give your time to hear what I have to say. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.